Hello everyone, welcome to another video by Chainsaw.com. I'm Rajdeep Ghosh. Today's video will be about Bizarre Slammer. The problem that will be centered around uh, is Putnam 2000 B2, the second problem of part B. Um, the contents of discussion are as follows. We'll be talking about Bizarre Slammer. And uh, the primary source of where the lemma occurs from is the question, what do all linear combinations of two given integers have in common? We'll be discussing this. The relevant problem is um, Putnam 2000 B2 problem. Um, obviously, we'll be waiting for the best comments on this video. The best comments will have a mention in the next video. The best responders in a month. Be considered for the Ramanujan Scholarship at Cheetah.com. To read more about the Ramanujan Scholarship, feel free to pause here. Is that we want to prove that the expression GCDM of M and N, the, the GCD of M and N divided by N times N choose M is an integer for all pairs of integers N greater than equals to M greater than equals one. Now, while this is the problem that we'll be trying to solve centrally, I would also like to discuss more about Bezout's lemma as a thing of its own. And so I'll try to take the conversation away from this problem in and of itself, and we'll try to talk about something else. I urge you, look at two or two number integers a and b. Look at all numbers of the form ax plus by. Look at all n such that you know n is equal to ax plus by, where a and b are fixed integers, say positive integers, and you range x and y over all integers. And you could do this on your own. This could, this could be a fun exercise to do on your own. You could pick a and b of your choice and experiment. A curious thing that you'll notice is that they all, all these numbers seem to have one thing in common. They all seem to be multiples of the GCD of A and B. That it seems that GCD of A and B divides N. Now, this is a, this is a very astute observation, and this is actually remarkably easy to show. Obviously, this must be true, since X and, X and Y are integers, and well, the GCD of A and B are, is a common factor, say it's D, then I can actually write A as DK and B as, well, say K1, and B as DK2, if the GCD is D. Then what we have is DK1X plus DK2Y is equal to N, and hence D times some integer is equal to N, which implies that D divides N. So for any value N, such that A to BY equals N, the GCD must divide n. So what we have is all linear combinations have this one thing in common. They're all divisible by the GCD. Now, it doesn't seem that big of a stretch to posit that not just that even though we already have that every that every number occurring in this set, set ax plus by, x and y range freely over z, every element is a multiple of the GCD, it doesn't seem that big of a stretch to posit that every multiple of the GCD is actually here. So it's sort of like an if and only if thing. All multiples, and this in particular, in particular, the GCD itself, particular, the GCD itself is a multiple itself is part of the set uh, that is part of the set i i there exists and i'm talking about the gcd at this point there exists x naught and y naught such that ax naught plus by naught and these are integers obviously by naught is equal to the gcd this just seems like a innocent observation but this is actually just Bezos lemma Bezos lemma posits but for any two integers, I can write their GCD as a linear combination of them. Now note that this immediately gives us a deeper relation, which is that if I take, if, if, say, if say I take these x0 and y0, and I look at a mx0 plus b my0, what I get is m times GCD of a and b, and I can pick m to be anything. So this actually shows that if this was true, if I could indeed find such x0 and y0, every single multiple of the GCD would be part of this set, which is exactly what we set out to achieve. So, the, so now we have a new question. 
the question is this given a and b element of well z plus positive integers find x naught and y naught such that x naught plus b y naught again set of part of integers is equal to gcd of a and b this is what we want to do now how do we go about showing this do you remember from the last video uh, in this series that we actually achieved uh, the proof of the Euclidean, the existence and the working of the Euclidean division algorithm? What And so what did it look like? The algorithm, how did it look like? We started off with B. We took off as many A's as possible. We looked at the, we looked at the remainder. And then we did the same thing with the remainder. And we kept doing this until we got a zero here and the number that was left here are double dash say this would be the gcd now doesn't it seem like we could reverse this process and actually get um b and actually get you know the gcd as a linear combination of a and b and this is actually a good strategy and this is actually in fact the proof so start off so we'll actually change notation just a little bit so that it uh, it it the, so, the, so that the notation doesn't get cluttery, we'll write b naught and a naught. So given b naught and a naught, just remember that these are b and a from the original question. I can find q naught and a one such that this holds, and a one is strictly less than obviously. And I can do the same thing with a naught and a one, and so on, and so on, until I get a n minus 2 is equal to n minus 1 q n minus 1 plus a n where a n is the gcd and the next step would just be a n minus 1 is equal to a n q n plus 0 and so we would actually get that a n is the gcd so this is what we have we have a system like this and we would like to use this system to write a n as some linear combination of a naught and b naught some k1 a naught plus k2 b naught this is what this is what the final goal is the final goal is and this actually works rather easily we start off by writing a n as a n minus 2 minus a n minus 1 q n minus 1 and just keep replacing the larger number the larger index in my the large n minus n minus 1 is larger than n minus 2 so we replace the larger index by its own remainder equation. So the equation before this was this. Right? So we write a n minus 1 as a n minus 3 minus a n minus 2 q n minus 2 times q n minus 1. And note that now all we have is a n minus just terms linear combination of a n minus 2 and a n minus 3. Look, so what we have is now a n minus 3 into minus q n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 times 1 plus q n minus 1 q n minus 2. So we've successfully gone from a linear combination of a n minus 2 and n minus 1 to a linear combination of a n minus 3 and n minus 2. And we can keep doing this process. You can take the larger index and keep reducing it until in the end we actually just have well a0 and a1 and we'll we'll write a1 as a linear combination of a0 and b0 and we'll just and so say this is what we did um k0 and b and well k1 and you would write a1 as as you, as you remember you write a1 as b0 minus a0 q0 and now we're done now it's purely in terms of a0 and b0 so so we've actually shown a very nice result we've proven we've proven given a and b i'm just rewriting these with element of z we never actually use it they were positive integers we never actually use that but this is just convention there exists x naught and y naught such that in element of z so that um sorry a x naught plus b y naught is equal to the gcd this is helpful so what this says is the set of all linear combinations this is the set of all linear combinations 
by linear combination we just mean elements of this type linear combinations of a and b of a and b all linear combinations so ax plus by as a x and y range freely over the integers is actually equal to all multiples of g c d a and b and that's it this actually simplifies a lot of the linear equations that you'll see you'll run into things called diophantine equations which are just it's just like a fancy word for an equation that uh, a number theoretic equation of a certain kind and these are and these ideas are actually very helpful while solving diophantine equations so the main idea is that you can actually write gcd of a and b as a linear combination of ax naught plus by naught remember the problem that you were trying to solve this now using this result we can actually write gcd of m and n as m x naught plus n y naught by n times n choose m we can write this but this is just well this term is obviously an integer so we'll just write y naught into n choose m this is clearly an integer we are left with m by n into x naught into n choose m so we want to show that it would be nice if you could show that m by n times n choose m sorry was an integer but is this really that hard to show because this is just we'll just expand it out is n factorial n factorial into n minus m factorial and we could just cancel things out we could write this just becomes n minus 1 factorial this just becomes m minus 1 factorial and what we what we are left with that this is equal to n minus 1 factorial by m minus 1 factorial times n minus m factorial this is just n minus m, n minus 1 choose n minus 1 which is clearly an integer so we've shown that this is an integer this is an integer uh, all right we've shown that this is an integer so we have an integer times an integer plus an integer so clearly this is an integer and we're done we're done that's it thank you for watching the video and uh, the recap of underlying ideas is here this is just a repetition of what i was saying before it's not nothing new so i will not actually repeat this uh, thank you for watching this video